Zero. 70 ampere hours. So this was the discharge test from this morning. I was just recording this so I don't need to remember the number. Because in this test with the MB31 we do it the other way around. We do the uh, charge test first and then the discharge test afterwards. Why? It's far more efficient. So the MB30s as well as the MB31s here they come with around 20% state of charge. And I'm not sure if this is a requirement because they were delivered via air transport. Could be, because usually the batteries are around 30 to 40% state of charge when they get delivered. And I thought it is far more efficient. If they are at 20% anyway, discharge them to zero and then do a full charge to 3.65 volts, measure the charge capacity and energy, and then we do the full discharge test afterwards. And then I charge it back up to 20% as it was before. So it is in line with all the other cells here. Because I also want to build a 12 volt battery out of these two models and do a bit of a 0.5p discharge. But first of all guys, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in super sunny, almost winter Australia. We've got mid of April and we've got beautiful blue skies. No clouds whatsoever. Perfect solar weather. Unless you have uh, big trees in the backyard which are shading your solar panels. Yeah, it is that time of the year again. April, May, June, July. These are my four months, which are not great. I still managed to fully charge the battery, but not every day anymore. So anyway, in today's video, we want to have a look at the EVE MB31. It is rated with 314 ampere hours of capacity. So I'm really keen to see how much capacity we can get out of this battery, because the MB30s, as you have seen in the last videos, they were rated for 306 ampere hours and delivered 333.3. Yep, all the threes you can get amazing batteries. So my expectations are very, very high now with these batteries here. And I'm really keen to see if we can, if we can potentially get 350 maybe. I don't know. This is a huge number. But you know, with these cells, everything is possible. So I have started charging around five hours ago. We are at 3.355 volts. We are still charging at 40 amps and uh, 200 ampere hours into this battery. So we are just over 50% state of charge now. It could take another four or five hours at least until we see a full charge here. So yeah, we leave the tester running here. There's nothing to see at the moment. Flat part of the charge curve, nothing to see. So while we are charging, I would just want to address something here. There are sometimes a few comments under my videos where people have concerned that I am getting here selected battery cells delivered because I've got 80,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, yeah, which they test before and they only give me the best of the best to show them on the channel. Say everything is great. We're getting 330 ampere hours out of these cells here. And then people buy it and get only 290 ampere hours out of these cells. So there are these rightful concerns about this, absolutely. Yeah, QSO, it's an established supplier. We have bought from them many, many years. Many of you guys have bought from them. And most of you are very happy and satisfied with the batteries they deliver to you. So let's uh, play the scenario. QSO has just selected these batteries here only for me to show them on the channel. Made sure they've got the highest capacity possible and sent them over to me for testing. I show them on the channel, you get less ideal results with your battery. You complain not only with QSO, but also with me on my channel, in the forums, under the videos, in the comment section, everywhere, because you're not happy with that. And more and more people will chip in and confirm, yep, yeah, these batteries are not as great as Andy has showed them on the channel. All of a sudden, QSO's good reputation is totally f***ed. People will avoid them like the pest. So their whole business concept is broken, is gone. Of course you could say, well, they just opened another company under a different name and keep selling these batteries. Yeah, but this other new company on the market hasn't got any reputation. I'm getting probably 10, 12 emails a week from other companies want me to show their 280k batteries here on the channel. Companies I've never heard of before. Yeah, we know QSO, we know Google Power, we know Basin, we know Duncan. Some of these reliable suppliers which are on the market for years now. They would risk this year-long reputation they have built up just to sell a couple of batteries to people and then all of a sudden people start complaining, no sales anymore. 
reputation is broken, business breaks down. I don't think any of these companies will risk that. Yeah, if you, if you buy from an unknown store on AliExpress or something, yeah, they've got nothing to lose. They just want to make the quick money. They want to sell, 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 and that's it. And they don't care about any reputation or customer service or to support you in any way if there's something wrong with the batteries. That's why I always highly recommend to buy from Alibaba directly. From these reliable suppliers, I have a whole list on my website. This is what the list is for, guys. And if there are any issues with these suppliers, they hopefully look after you because they've got something to lose. And I have also tested batteries here on the channel, which I have not ordered myself. So they went to a different name, different address, and I picked them up and tested them here in the off-grid garage. And they were still good. And I would never take any sponsorship from any manufacturer out there where they pay me money and can tell me what I have to say about their products. This will never happen. I mean, I've got a bit of a reputation as well, right? And if a product is shit, I will let you know. None of any of these batteries here I've got in my off-road garage here. There was never any money exchange or something from the manufacturers or suppliers of these devices here. There was no request to say something specifically about these devices. They were just delivered to the off-road garage here because they trust me. I am saying the truth. And no matter how good these batteries or devices are, I am always finding something negative. There's always something to improve. Because so far we haven't had a 5 out of 5 Roxy on the channel, right? No product is perfect. So yeah, unfortunately this channel has still no sponsorship here like many other channels have. So I'm still reliant totally on you, on your comments, on your donations to buy me a beer or a coffee or become a member of the channel and donate on a regular base. And this is the only sponsorship I have, guys. And I like it because you don't tell me what I should say in these videos, right? You are watching the show and supporting the channel because you want me to be honest. And this is exactly how it should be and how it will be forever. So this is just my opinion about your concerns of these companies sending me selected devices or batteries. So yeah, I guess I can say it in the middle of the video as well. Thank you very much for your support, everything you are doing here, making these videos possible, keeping the channel honest and making it a reliable and fun platform where we all come together, share our common hobby exchange information and of course learn from each other okay enough of that back to the show well actually we have to wait another four hours i'll probably calibrate a spat now and i'll be back when it's dark Pfft. Pfft. and good after evening my friends it's becoming a late night show again so we have now fully charged this um, MB31 battery cell. It took eight hours and 15 minutes. Charged all the way to 3.65 volts. The current tapered off to 15.3 and then the tester stopped discharging. So, result. What did I say just a second ago? 350 ampere hours? Well, we could charge this battery with 1098 watt hours. 1.1 kilowatt hours into this battery. That's amazing. The capacity is 329.7 ampere hours. So that is a lot shorter than I was expecting. I was, I had really high expectations now after the MB30 gave us 330 ampere hours charging and discharging. But this one seems a bit short here. I mean, short. It is rated for 314 ampere hours and we get 330 out of it. So it is far over spec anyway. But I mean, expecting 350 ampere hours out of this battery, it was a bit too ambitious, right? Anyway, I have already saved the curve and the data as well. And we can now start the discharge test of this battery. So this will be another eight hours. Discharge, 40 amps, cut off 2.5 volts. Okay, without further to do, let's get started and discharge this battery. Start. As always guys, you have a good night's sleep and we see us again tomorrow morning to have a look at the discharge curve and how much capacity the MB31 will give us. And good morning, my friends. Welcome back to the off grid garage here. It's another morning, another test result. So we have now fully discharged this battery. Exactly, it was the discharge test. Eight hours, 15 minutes, all the way down to 2.5 volts with 40 amps. And we have charged the battery with almost 330 ampere hours. So from the previous test, we know charging and discharging energy or capacity is almost the same. So if we charge this battery with 330 ampere hours only, can we get 350 out of it? Potentially not, right? 
So without further to do, let's have a look at the result. So here as well, we're getting over one kilowatt hour of energy out of this one cell, which is a capacity of 330.6 ampere hours. It is not 350. So now you would ask the question, why is the MB30, which has a rated capacity of 306 ampere hours only, had more capacity while discharging than the MB31 with rated 314 ampere hours? And the answer is, well, I don't know. I've just measured one cell each and this is the result. So I wonder if they are rated for 306 or 314 ampere hours and we measure now 330 or even more ampere hours, will the capacity or stored energy actually reduce over time to these rated 306 or 314 ampere hours? And it's very hard to test because I would need to do hundreds of cycles now on these cells here and then compare the results and I just don't have the capacities to do that. But I can imagine that I will get more of these batteries from maybe other manufacturers who wants me to show their batteries as well here on the channel. And we can build another Frankenstein battery out of all these cells here, put them all together in series, despite EVE saying, don't do that. Don't mix cells with different capacity in one battery. But we know from the Frankenstein project, it is working just fine. And then we could add this MB Frankenstein battery to our battery shelf and cycle it every single day. Yeah? Give us a bit of a long-term perspective of a long-term test. And then maybe after a year or something, we measure these two cells again, do the same charge and discharge capacity tests and compare this with the ones we just did. Ah, oh, glad you're asking about the QR code of these cells. Let's have a look. Okay, we are using our lithium iron phosphate QR battery QR scanner. Roman has just upgraded the scanner, so it actually is reading the MB31 and the MB30 now. So let's scan the QR code of the... There it is, that's the MB31. It scans the MB31 with 306 ampere hours as well. Okay, let's do a cross check. Let's use a different QR code scanner. Copy this code and use the QR code decoder of the Global Power website. And it says code seems right, code length is right. And here it decodes with a 314 ampere hours. So something is still not right with the lithium iron phosphate QR code scanner. So it should actually scan with 314 ampere hours. The Google Power decoder is right. This one is still wrong here. But interesting here, the manufacturing date is from the 12th of March 24 not even four weeks ago. So these are brand new, fresh cells. Amazing. Yeah, QSO got them hot out of the factory, put them on an airplane and dropped them off here in my backyard. You've seen the video, right? Okay, let's scan the um, MB30. Oh, there we go. EVE power, MB30, 314 ampere hours. Ah, he mixed this up, right. Okay, I have to text him again. So the MB30 with 306 ampere hours shows actually with 314 ampere hours. Maybe I've sent him the wrong data or maybe he has mixed them up, whatever. I'm sure there will be a new version coming out very, very soon. Okay, this one is produced end of February. So the MB30 are two weeks older than the MB31. And both batteries are coming from the Jingman factory again, so... <laughs> I never had batteries from any other facility they have. It is all about the Jingman. So, interesting stuff. I'll leave a link to this um, lithium ion phosphate scanner down under the video as well. This is a very feature-rich app. You can scan multiple cells and it puts all the information into a table for you, which you can export to Excel to keep track of your batteries, of your serial numbers. So it's a very nice app. Let's have a look at this battery here. This is dead flat as well. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, there's actually a bit of a negative belly, but the cell is totally discharged at the moment. And we know that these cells are contracting and compressing again while charging and discharging. So this was actually my main thought at the beginning, 
to compress one cell and do a couple of cycles, do a couple of cycles on an uncompressed cell and then see if we can measure any difference. But I think it needs more than a couple of cycles only to see a difference there, if there is a difference at all. So I'm not sure. I'm still an uncompressing guy and I would use these cells as they are in a battery shelf. Or if you use any of these do-it-yourself boxes here, they, they sometimes come with a compression system. So then, of course, I would compress them as well. Okay, my friends, so far this quick video here about the uh, EVE MB31 charge discharge test, 330 ampere hours. So let me know what you think about these new chemistry, these new cells from EVE. It seems like they are both amazing. Very, very high quality from QSO, super high capacity measured. So which one would you choose? MB30 with 10,000 cycles, MB31 with 8,000 cycles. And especially considering the MB30 with uh, 306 ampere hours was actually measured higher than the MB31 with only 314 ampere hours. So the smaller battery has a higher capacity is this something to consider? How long will this higher capacity actually stay with the cell before it tapers off? Does it taper off? Or is this the capacity we will see for the next thousands of cycles? <laughs> There's a lot of speculation. We could ask AI, but it wouldn't know either. And even the manufacturer EVE doesn't know how these cells will perform in a couple of years. They only do tests like maybe, I would say six months or so, cycle them around the clock and then extrapolate this data and make an assumption for 10,000 or 8,000 cycles. They have not cycled one of these cells 10,000 times just to make this statement. Okay, my friends, I link both the MB, where is it? MB30 and MB31 here down under the video and on my website as well. Some of you have already left comments and ordered these cells already. I think they are fantastic. So let me know in the comments down below, which one have you ordered? Which one would you go for and why? <laughs> as always guys thank you so much for watching thanks for all your great support here everything you do is very much appreciated but there are a few people out there who are a bit more beautiful than everyone else because they are donating to the channel They're buying me a beer or a coffee or becoming a member of the channel now so thank you very much for all your support and until the next video guys when we do something um, completely different on the channel you stay charged stay safe and thanks again for watching see you then bye bye here they are. Thank you to QSO for delivering these wonderful and beautiful cells to us. And of course EVE for making them. <laughs>